Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Chris here. In today's video, I thought we'd break down one of the songs I produced for the artist Sam Christie called The Pop Song. Let's get into it. Okay, so The Pop Song. Now, this is a song off the album that I produced for Sam called I'm gonna have to get this up because it's a bit long. I love you so much, but I don't know how to tell you because I know you don't love me back. <laughs> There's nothing more Tumblr than this name, but you know, I'm very proud of this album. It's 14 tracks of music we made during COVID basically, and it's a long time in the making, but I'm very happy that it's managed to see the light of day. It's an album I'm very proud of, and I'm really excited to show off this song. This was the first single of the album, and I guess it's it's a song we really got a solid energy from when we were putting this whole thing together. So to get us started, I'm in the Ableton session right now. This song has gone through a couple different phases. This is the production phase where it doesn't necessarily sound like the full release because I've mixed it in Pro Tools, so I've taken out all the stems and mixed it there, but we'll get into that a bit later. So for now, I just thought I'd break down what's going on in the session and then I'll open up the Pro Tools session and we can dive into that a bit. But to get us started on what we're looking at right now, the main inspiration when I was getting the song started was writing the piano line and kind of, I guess, the main pop hook which sounds like this if i just play the instrumental this is what the final hook sounds like so i had written this hook and i was like i sent it to sam and sam's amazing at writing lyrics on the spot so i gave it to him and i was like yo do you think you can write some lyrics for this and he came back with a rough which was great but we still needed a hook so as i was kind of searching for ideas i actually came across a splice loop which ended up being the hook of the song and then we just worked through that and so this was the loop that we used <laughs> So that's the loop. We got that and I pitched, one of them's the normal pitch. Let's see if I can see that. So this is up 12 and then this is down 12. So we've shifted it one octave up, one octave down. And then on top of that, we've also layered in our own vocals to um, kind of match with that and add some more layers. So we've got this, if I remove, it's on a vocal synth, so it sounds like this. If I remove the vocal synth. And I believe we also used a mix of the vocoder and the unsynthesized vocals in the last chorus, but for the intro, that's what we used to kind of fill up the space. And that matched with the piano. You've got this as the intro. And what's really fascinating about when we were trying to figure out how to get the hook for this, that sample that I had found was um, just that one line. And then I found if you shifted it, what was it, five, five seven tones, seven, seven, seven tones, let's see. Yeah, so up a fifth. So that in the combination with the chords we played just stuck really nicely and ended up really working in favor of the chords we had chosen. So that was the initial start of it. And then obviously we put in the drums and we've gone for this very 80s nostalgic kind of uh, drum sound. So I'll just play those in solo real quick. So I've got a lot of these kind of bossa loops on this. I said the CR78, a kind of sound. And so I've got that plus the kick. And I'm doing a lot of this uh, gated reverb uh, vibe. Let's get some of the knocks. Some shakers. That rim on top of that. Loads of just gated reverb and everything. And then these tom fills, these very big. 
then these are the main kind of tom fills the gated toms all those 80s so all together you get that layering up some snares so that's pretty much the full beat maybe we add like a ride or something at the end That's the drums, pretty straightforward, you know, it's just mainly just a really steady groove to keep with the pulse of the piano, which is quite, I guess, syncopated with those drums if I play them together. And then the bass, oh, you can see there's a lot of frozen stuff in here. This was a very hefty project, so I'm using an Omnisphere patch that's side-chained. Drums going. A little bit of guitar just to add some plucky kind of elements. And then to layer with that, we've got loads of vocals, but I'll get into those because those are special. Besides that, there's a nice little outro going on where there's some piano I played in. This is Omnisphere, so I'm likely just using the Keyscape pianos for this. A little bit of extra guitar going on. Yeah, some little reverse swells in there, which is quite nice. Let's get that. Just to finish it off, and we also use that to go into the chorus. Get the piano. You can hear we've got loads of those vintage uh, brass patches. So these are the pianos we use in the chorus. Kind of DX vibe mixed with a CP80. So you know you've got that really percussive 80 sound, and then we've got these. Brassy synth brass sounds, side chained. So you can see them cut up there. Oh, and a Solina doing that classic on the offbeat string hit. Together. Get the bass on that. So that's the majority of the arrangement. Pretty straightforward, not too many crazy things going on. When we were working on this song, obviously we had the a rough vocal line together plus the hook. We wanted to add something special to give it a bit more of a unique touch. So I hit up my friend Hannah, aka Faber. She featured a lot on this song and I just sent her an instrumental without any lyrics and I was like, listen, we just kind of need some oohs and some ahs <laughs> and all that. Just something to, to thicken it up. And she came back with this. Really nice. Just holding a chord, you know, on the, on the every other kind of bar. And if I get the pianos in there, you can hear how that sounds together. Got some vocal samples in there. And then we also got our friend Melazine to just sing the chorus basically alongside Sam to add some extra BVs, a little bit of that female BV touch to it. Sounds like this. We ain't got real plans. Can I get Sam's voice under that? Oh. We ain't got real plans. Can we take it slow? And again, Hannah pulled through with the choir vibes and she gave us this full fat backing vocal. Plans, can we take it slow? 
We ain't got real plans, can we take it slow? We ain't got real plans, can we take it slow? Amazing. Listen to that. I'm just going to play that in solo. You know, I sent her the song and an hour or so later she came back with these and I was like, that is amazing. You really pulled through with that. Then we've got Milo Banks' feature on this. Can we take it slow? Whoa. If patience was a game, I'd be winning. I'm trying to sit down while you're running to Nothing the too finish, crazy Mike. in terms of processing going on. We've got some doubles to kind of thicken up the second half of his verse. I've been sitting, thinking by myself, yeah. drinking only bottom shelves. Wonder what the hell would help. Just to spice up the the rest of the verse, you know, I'm kind of building every time every section comes. It's getting a little bit thicker, a little bit more interesting to to keep the listener's attention a bit. That is the majority of the song. That we do have a couple little this from the rough actually. We do have some ad libs that Sam did. <laughs> Let me get this is the middle eight of the song. Step closer before you walk away, just give me closure. I need your love to save me. We'll take it all back, please, baby. I need some really just tucked in there to just again add something different, a nice unique texture. And you know, just really fill up that space nicely. So that's great. And then come the last chorus where we had to go full fat with the BVs to really bring home the, the idea of the hook. This is what we got. We think of real plans, can we take it slow? We think of real plans, can we take it slow? We think of real plans, can we take it slow? Most of that is the vocoder, but we felt like this song just really had that electronic vibe to it. So we really stuck with those kind of sounds, you know, kind of Daft Punk, I guess, approach to most of the vocals. They're very hard auto-tuned. That was kind of something new we had attempted. Sam was, I guess, prior to this very singer-songwriter folky uh, vibes from him. So with this, we went full fat on the auto-tune and we just, let's see, we slept on... Yeah, well, I mean, pretty much on, on as fast as it can go on six, which is almost there. But that was the sound and we went for that. And the same with Milo Banks. He wasn't super into using auto-tune and we tried it out and it kind of worked with the style of the songs. So we're like, let's keep it. And that was the that was the vibe we went for. So very happy with that. But that is the majority of the production. You can see there's a bit of processing going on, especially on the vocals and stuff. But... For this, I'm pretty sure, at least on the lead vocals, I would have just kept the processing for the sake of building up the production. Then I would have removed it, replaced it on the mix side, and then worked from there. So with that in mind, let's dive over to Pro Tools and just take a quick look at the mix. All right, so we are back into the Pro Tools session. Now, this is where things get a lot more heavier on the processing side, I guess. You can see what we've got going on. I'll bounce down all of the stems. And now looking at all of the tracks, you can see since there was a bit of processing going on, I would probably try avoiding processing everything. Again, it's more a lot of effects, a bit of compression. The vocals is where the majority of processing is going on because I would have removed it from the production and re-put it in here so I had more control over it and then there's obviously all the effects back here so let's quickly dive into what I got going on so this is how the project is laid out we've got the bass drums guitar synths and then other stuff outro and then the vocals all down here at the bottom and then that's all subbed into these buses down here we've, that goes into an all music and an all vocals into the mix bus it's so a rear bus, which is just some parallel compression on the end, and then a limiter on the end for the final bit of loudness when I would send it to the guys to listen to. And there is also sonar works, but that's just for my listening benefit. So quickly diving into this, the majority of my processing tends to be around bus compression. Well, not bus compression, but bus processing. So I'll sum everything to one group. All the drums will go into one 
output or one group and then I'll process those. They might have a bit of a processing individually on the tracks, but I prefer to get my sound from groups. It's just kind of how I, I've enjoyed discovering the production side, I guess. This is usually the way I go about it, but saying that, I will process on the bus and I'll process individually, but we'll take a look and I will dive in. So flipping through everything individually, if I go and play the bass, let's start in verse two. That's where a little bit of bass comes in. You can see what's going on. So a bit of compression with that Silver Face 1176, some EQ to filter in our bass just to give us a bit more heft. That goes into some parallel distortion just to really give us a bit more growl on the low end. A bit of decapitator adding some saturation on punish and full at some pretty intense saturation. That then goes into another EQ just to do some fine little tweaks to carve into a space. Some multiband just to really make everything sit nice. I had probably tried putting some Voice of God on there for some extra low end. Let's hear it. Oh, I see. I've got it automated. So on the last chorus, it comes in to really give us that last bit of heft. Nice little move. And then the sub wasn't in. There we go. Yeah, so I probably added the sub during the mix phase just to give us a little bit more. Yeah, just a little bit more heft on that last chorus. Going into the drums. Ooh, you can hear that delay going on there. So if I remove all of the bus processing on the drums, you hear what a difference it makes. I mean, most of it is volume, but we can turn it on one by one. You can hear it. So some saturation, more saturation, inflation, a bit of EQ and limiting. See this. Okay, let's do the verse. Bit of EQ, some more top end and mids, taking out a bit of the lows. There's clearly enough compression, so I'm not using that. Some tape. And that's really giving us some glue, a nice little bit of low in there. And then clipping just to snap off a tiny bit of the peaks when it gets too intense, I imagine, in the last chorus. A little bit going on on the individual side. Mainly some effects, a little bit of shaping with some EQ. What's this? So here I'm doing, giving a lot of... Okay, so that's shifting. This was a, a trick I had seen once where you can use Echo Boy on the fastest repeat full mix and then just pick one of these and it's just a nice way to give something a sound without, you know, EQing, you know, just a unique way to give something a bit of character. But that also has a 16th delay on top of that. Very wet. Being saturated a bit. We've got a left and right, so the left is very dry, the right is very wet. Shakers. Got the kick and snare, just with a bit of EQ and compression, not too much going on. Get that chorus going. Lovely. And then we've got our guitars. We're here again. Not too much going on. Bit of delay, some compression to really squash those transients. Since where there's plenty going on here, there's loads of stuff going on. Some compression, saturation, lots of saturation. A lot of filtering to kind of just shape where everything lives, carve out a bit of space for that vocal, adding lots of, you know, flangers, and there's some effects down here at the bottom. On the right side here, these are where I keep all of the effects that I can send stuff to. These ones all being my kind of main effects. Then I've got a section for the lead vocals. And they're all subbed into different kind of main 
effect groups, which then go into this effect bus. The effect bus goes into the mix bus, but it's also got some parallel compression. This channel right here is just an 1176 with everything being sent to it. So you can see here all of the drums, bass, guitar, synths, vocals, they're all getting sent to it. I had seen this uh, done by Andrew Sheps a couple of years back and I've used it in quite a lot of mixes because I just really enjoy the sound. Do some pretty light compression, just two to one. And I think it's swimming between like three to five. Let's see. Let's get the whole uh, song playing. And then I have that automated so in the last chorus it comes in and just really fills up that. And you can hear what it's doing if I mute it. It's nice, it's very subtle, but what I like is the fact that you can feed that into certain parts of the song when you know it needs just a little bit more extra oomph, just to, to fill it up a bit. And I like that it prioritizes the loudest thing in the song. So in most cases, that will be the lead vocal. So it's always sitting at the top, but then once there's a gap where that lead vocal isn't singing, it just brings up everything else. All the instrumental stuff gets a bit louder and just gives it a bit more, I don't know, glue, I guess would be would be the word. And there's just a little bit of EQ to add some low end, a little bit of top end on top of that. So it's nice, a little like, excitement, I guess, to the mix. Nothing too crazy going on on the mix bus. I'm doing a bit of trimming because maybe I was pushing it too hard and just needed to turn everything down. And then this townhouse compressor is my main bus compressor. It's basically like an old school SSL G bus compressor. Just as a sound that's so awesome and I really enjoy using that on the mix bus. Again, a little bit of low end and top end just to add a smiley curve to the whole song. Little bit of sculpting on the music and the vocal bus just to again add some final polishing. And then on here, these I don't tend to touch them too much, my kind of master groups, but in this case I've put the 1073 and just a Neve. They're actually disabled because I've ran out of processing power, but they just add a bit of coloration to the final kind of stages of the, in this case, the vocals and the bass. That is the majority of the project. If you look at the, the vocals real quick, because that's where the majority of the processing is going on. Let me just solo the lead. We ain't got real plans. Can we take it slow? We ain't got real plans. Can we take it slow? So even his lead, we would have pitched, we would have kept it the same, but pitched it up to have that same sound, I guess, as when we pitched the sample that we were playing with. And so outside of that, there's a little bit of compression going on. The tune to obviously get us to that spot, a little bit of EQ, DSing, probably more DSing and just control, compression. And then, yeah, just a little bit of mid boost and some limiting. Effects, there's nothing too crazy. I always enjoy starting the songs with a mono reverb, maybe a mono delay in this case. Get in, slide out, forget all the problems and lay down. You need using a combination of two reverbs, plate and a hall, and a little touch of that mono, because then when you play the song in mono, at least you know you've definitely got a steady mono reverb, and then you can always feed in more of the stereo reverb besides that. These would be the different kind of sections of the song, the chorus, let's get down there. So, so yeah, here would be the verses, chorus, and the outro. Can we take it slow? Got a little delay through here. We ain't got and we take it slow. We ain't got real plans. Then we've got some parallel compression, which just always helps with your lead vocals. Just take one step all buttons in, really smashing that vocal. Away, if I mute this, I need your love to save me. Turn it back on. We'll take it all back, please, baby. It really sticks it in your face and makes it nice and punchy. The doubles, we've got a little bit of saturation going on, some compression, DSing, and then sculpting against some more EQ. Probably a similar approach to Milo Banks's 
verse. If patience was a game, I'd be running. Same thing, just compression. Down, why you running to the finish? Why you trying to speed up? Slow it down on for that uh, one eighth delay. You can hear it's more kind of the the style, I guess, to have that trappy kind of sound with a very hard delay going on there. Plugins would probably be the same, but they'd just be a bit more sculpted towards his sound. I put in a little harmony in there. I, I think I had used Alter Boy to get this. Yeah, yeah, we pitched it down. My breath and it's my words, I'm trying to let go. Let and with the auto tune on top of that, it's kind of shifting it in the right place, which is quite nice. But we didn't have it, and I thought it would be a nice little addition to his verse to give it a bit more of an accent. See the silver line, but the clouds gray. Write the same words, it's a different page. I've been. And then doubles come in where we've got some similar stuff, just some saturation, compression, de -essing, and then a little bit of sculpting just to make sure it's not getting too in the way of the lead vocal. Now here in the BVs, yeah. <laughs> we've got our classic uh, trap uh, ad-libs, I guess. And then we've also got Sam's rough uh, ooze that are pretty squashed. Bit of compression using gain reductor, gain reduction, should I say? But I love sticking this on top of reverbs and stuff because it really just fills up the sound. More sculpting, and then a little bit of auto panning. With oh yes, just to get it out of the way of the lead vocal, and then in the last chorus, this is kind of the balance that we've chosen for the vocals. We think of real. Can we take it slow? We ain't got real plans. Can we take it slow? We ain't got And so all together, this is what we got. That's uh because we ain't got real plans. Can we take it slow? Wow, it's getting dark. There you go. That is the breakdown of Sam Christie's the pop song featuring Milo Banks. I'm very happy to ha have this song see the light of day because we spent loads of time working on it and it's just a song I really enjoy. I think it's it's one of my favorites. So if you enjoyed this, let us know below. Do you, do you enjoy these types of content where I break down songs? Is it something you want to see more of? I'd love to know. So leave us a comment below letting us know what you, what you think about this and feel free to like and subscribe. The support really helps and I'm very thankful for everyone who's done so already. So thank you very much. And once again, I've been Chris Vella, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.